chaps and chapettes. Now, this is my Albion SCR Terrier Brighton number 40. Honestly, I don't really like how specific they are in their naming, but so I'm going to just call it the Brighton Terrier. Number 40, as you can see, with very nice detailing, a top picture of a uh, bird's eye view on the top. Let me find it. There's that if you want it. It's DCC ready. Uh, this was the last model I looked at. Not much else to say apart from the instructions were included in the box, and this one <laughs> didn't come from England, it came from Australia. Here she is the Brighton Terrier. Very nice. And also very small. If I grab my Smokey Joe, I don't want to grab both of those, do I now? No. No, no, indeed. There we are. Now I place this here for some, just a little bit of, kind of, speculate for a little bit of visual looks. Yeah. It's absolutely minuscule, isn't it? But it does have quite nice features like red connecting rods, the Brighton nameplate, very fine detailing where it won a medal at the Paris, at the Paris Exhibition, gold medal to be precise, in I think 1876. And it was the faint, and it was the celebrity engine, the LB and SCR. Very nice de the detailed cabin there with painted loop levers. And glazed windows, however, they the glazed windows are glazed crossways and cut across, which, when looked at, aren't all that bad, but, because you're not really looking in the cab, but when you do look in it, it's not all that nice, but, yeah. There are no sprung buffers on this model, by the way. It's far too small to fit them. Copper chimney, which is plastic, I presume. And my model is, of course, an A1. I actually like the A1 more in real life than I do in photos, I think. And mine cost me 200 AUD, which is actually good for a terrier, an LBSCR terrier in Australia. Because others on the market when I was searching were about $257. And there were a lot of other ones which I didn't like, like British Railways ones and southern ones which I didn't really like but whatever now this doesn't have a fl no flywheels in this it's just got a standard what I think's a five pole motor five or a three pole well, it can only be either one or the other all wheels pick up and it is as I said quite stupidly t tiny and there's only one extra attachment for you to put on now let's go drive this thing. And it was a zero p cost as a zero p locomotive for British by British Railways. And she should come backwards. Come forwards, please. She's a bit of a speedy little bugger, isn't it? Look at it go. Very nice. She's not all that much of a crawler. She's been run in. Not all that of a, much of a crawler, is she? Just show you the crawl. Coming down. Slowly speeding up. Cuts in about there. My, well, at least mine cuts in about there, running. Backwards is a bit better. It's more of a crawl, but it's kind of cutting out. It's stalled there a little bit. What about forwards again? Yep. So it's better backwards and forwards. That's pretty much how you would have one run, isn't it? Like that. So there you have it, chaps. Well, chaps and chapettes. Um, my Hornby Terrier. A very nice little model, even though it cost me a lot. For what it is, I'm impressed with the amount of detail in a small area. So, yeah. Goodbye. Tell us our chaps and chapettes. I'll see you in the next one.